So, do you want your render to look like this? Or this? I'll show you how with 3-point lighting. In Das Studio, um, you have something that looks like this, right? You don't set a camera when you first started out. You don't set a camera. Um, you, do, you don't have any kind of lighting. Um, you basically let the environment uh, lighting do the work. So if you go to the environments option tab, you would see that there is an environment mode. Now, usually it has dome and scene. Um, I think that's the default that they have. And that's what the environment light is. Now, um, the environment light is actually controlled by um, the HDRI that you load in. Um, I'm not going to go into details about HDRI as of yet because it's kind of a little complicated for now. Um, but you will want to learn that because it will help you speed up a lot of the rendering. But let's say we are not going to be using this. So how do I normally set my... Um, pictures. So very first thing, um, you never want to render through your perspective view. You always want to get a camera. So on top here, you would see an add camera. So you add a new camera. And down here, there is the active view that you can copy. So basically, you copy the active view of what you're seeing right now. So you set the camera exactly where your perspective view is. So when I move my perspective, and if I go back to the camera, it will go back to the frame that I want. So make sure when you're trying to modify things, you go back to your perspective view. So you don't mess with um, the, the framing that you want. <clears throat> okay, so very first thing, um, if you were to render right now using the camera view, so if you go back to camera and you hit render, you will get something that's very flat. Um, I'll tell you why in a second, because usually when you render, um, you're using the environment light and you're also using another light that you are not setting up right now. It is the actual light from the camera. Yeah, uh, you might not notice this, but um, there is a headlamp in your camera. So that's headlamp down here. So let's take a look at the effect. Now you can see that it's kind of flat, um, no shadows, nothing. It looks like something that's just pasted on. Not really that great, <clears throat> not really that great here. So kind of flat. Now we're not gonna save that. We're just gonna cancel it. Yeah, we're not gonna save that. We don't want that. So very first thing that you would like to do, um, if you don't really like to, um, you don't really like that flat look, you can first, Start by turning off the camera. So make sure that you're selecting your camera. Go to parameters and headlamp. Switch the headlamp mode from auto to off. Now you would say, whoa, so what am I going to see here? Uh, nothing. Don't worry, we're going to add the lights back in. So go back to perspective view. And then we will go and set up our lights. So usually we want to have the lights at about 45 degree angle. Um, it, you can change that later, but uh, the basic is you, you get about 45 degree angle and you set up the first light. The first light is called a, <clears throat> a, a main light. Now that main light basically lights up the subject that you want to render. Okay, so um, if we go up to this little torch like thing you can see that it's creating a new spotlight and again you want to copy the perspective view so basically what you're seeing right now you want to copy it and accept it now if we go back to the camera view and we kind of take a look at the preview of it in iray mode <clears throat> You see that mm, it doesn't seem to have any changes, right? Because the power of the environment light is much stronger than the spotlight that you have right now. So if you don't want the environment light to interfere with what you're trying to set up, you should go up to environment options. <clears throat> and then down here in the environment mode, change it to scene only. Now, of course, Occasionally, you would want to use the environment light as well, but that's a more advanced setting later on. Now, you would see that we can still see the, the, the actual subject, but it's really dark. So let's turn up the light a little bit. 
So go back to the spotlight. I'm going to rename it to main lights. Oops, sorry. I'm going to name it main light so that it's easier to remember. Now, once you select the main light, go down to the parameters menu in light. There are a lot of options here. Um, you're just going to focus on a few right now. Spread angle, it's how, how wide your beam is going to cast. The light geometry tells the light what kind of a light it is. Is it a normal, just a spotlight, or does it have a diffuser in front of it? <clears throat> now, we're going to use the diffuser in a moment when we do the fill light. Um, we're going to keep it as point light at the moment because I want a really sharp, really sharp shadow. Now, the final one that you need to remember would be the lumen, right? The luminous flux here. Now, we want to turn it way up. So it started at 1,500. I'm going to go up to 30,000 just to begin with. Now, you would see that, well, our character is lit up. Um, you can see really harsh shadow, still kind of dark. So let's push that up a little more to 60,000. Ah, lights up a little better. Still not what I want. I want it a little higher. So let's push it up to 150,000. Okay, now that's something that I would like. Now you can see the harsh shadows on the side. Now uh, you can see it on the side of her face and you can see it on the side. It creates more of a dramatic look, but um, the shadow seems to be too harsh, right? So next we need to add a new spotlight. Now this time, because the shadow is on the right of the character, so we are going to add an other light on this side of the character so that we can basically light up some of the shadow so that it's not as harsh. So we will go up to the new spotlight again. We'll create an other spotlight. Now let's change the name here too. We'll call this the fill light. <clears throat> the fill light basically fill out the shadows. Now let's go back to the camera and take a look at what happens. Well, again, um, the shadow is still there. That's because we haven't turned up the light of the fill light yet, right? The power of the fill light yet. So go to the fill light inside your scene panel. Click on it. Parameters. And then down to light. Now this time, we're going to increase the spread angle to 100. After that, we'll turn the light geometry to disk. So basically what it does is that it adds a diffuser in front of the light um, so that the light spreads out a little bit and it's not as the, the, the shadows are not going to be as sharp as um, what you are going to get from a normal spotlight. And we're also going to increase the size of the uh, diffuser. Now because it's a disk diffuser, so we only have to modify the uh, height. So basically that's the diameter of the disk. Now if you're using one of those rectangular runs, you can actually control the height and the width of your diffuser. But since I normally just use a disk diffuser, so I'm just going to change this to, um, let's say, 50 centimeters. So it's a little wider. It casts a softer light on our character. Now, we have to turn up the light a little bit. It's still at 1,500, so that's not a lot. Now, usually for me, if I use this setup uh, with the diffuser at 50 and then the spread angle at 100, I usually use about 60% of the power of the main light. So um, it's about 100,000. So now you would see the shadow is a lot weaker, right? It's a lot weaker, but we can still see the Rembrandt, Rembrandt shadow on her face. So it looks much nicer now. Um, the character is well lit. Um, we have the shadows that we want to create a dramatic effect. But now we come to another problem. The background and her hair are so similar in color that it, it kind of blends her into the background. So what can we do? Well, we add one more light to it. And we'll go back to perspective view. Don't worry if it's dark. And you spin around. 
Now this time, you want it to be a, a little bit like above her head, but a little bit in the back. And you add one more spotlight. Okay, again, we change it to perspective view. And we call this the rim light. And you accept it. Now, with the rim lights, the setting that I normally use would be, well, keeping it at a 60 spread angle. And you would see that the circle is kind of surrounding all of her um, so that we know how where, where most of the light is going to be casted. Um, occasionally, I would add a diffuser in front, so I would change the light geometry. But for this, uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to change anything. But I'm going to change the power of the light. Now, usually I would use the power that's very similar to the main light, about 40% or to 60% of the uh, of the main light. So this time, I'm going to put 100,000 too into it. And you can see that the back of her is lit up. Now, let's go back to the camera view and take a look. Now, if you see this, if you look at the camera, you can see that the back of her hair is kind of lit up. So it's kind of being separated from the background. Now, let's see if we can make it a little clearer by increasing the lumen even more. 150,000. Now, this time, you would see, well, it's the shoulder is lit up, shoulder is lit up, her hair is lit up, and the side of her thighs are lit up. So, mostly what we want. But I'm going to change this a little more by going in hold on make sure you check the rim light and I'm actually going to decrease the spread angle because I want it to be a little more powerful whoops a little too much yeah, I want to focus it a little bit more on her so let's change that to 30 so it's a little more spot on her now you would see that the back is lit up even further and she seems to be separating a little more from the back. We we'll change this a little more and move it down a little bit so that we get that halo effect on her. Okay. So if we go back to the camera view, you would see she's much better lit up this way. So this is the basic three-point lighting system that I normally use to light up our character. Now, one more extra tip here is that you can see the background is kind of dark, right? If we were to turn on the environment lights, then we can light up the background. But um, occasionally, we might not want that. So usually at this moment, I will add one more light to just light up the background. So we'll turn around and move it so that we will just light up the background here. So I'll add another spotlight. This time, I usually call it the environment light. Environment light, and I will apply the perspective view, accept it. Now, again, we will change the different spread angles. Usually for this, it will be a little wider because I want it to be really wide. I want it to light up everything in the background. So I change it to 140 degrees. And because we don't want harsh shadows in the background, so I'll add a diffuser and I'll change the diameter to something really big, like 100. And then I'll try to light up the background with 300,000. So the background is well lit. Now, if you go back and see the camera, so you would see that the picture looks a lot nicer this way. And if we render it right now, you would see the result there. So I hope this video helps you in lighting your scene. Um, remember, mostly for a character, if you want it to pop out of the picture when you want to render it, remember the three different lights. The main light, which gives us the main light source, casting most of the shadows that you want. A few light that will weaken the shadows a little bit so that it's not as, as harsh. A rim light 
to basically have your character um, give your character a halo so that it's cut out from the background and if you want one more light to light up the background you would want to have an environment light which is set with a really wide spread so that the light goes onto the background well for your homework um, I would hope to see one of your picture so make a render yourself uh, with whatever character you want with whatever background that you want and show it to me remember to hit like and subscribe and you really want to help me join my patreon page i'll see you next time